All right, lesson 5-1, uh, shell method, volume, uh, and arc length. This is a completely BC topic. So, so far, I think this might be our first real BC topic where we, it's not covered in Calculus AB. So, we're going to do it together, and we're going to do our best and practice and then learn it. All right, so this involves, again, finding volume. But instead of doing circular or disks, this creates more like cylinders, which they call shells. And we have a different formula to do that. So I want you to look here. This is the formula we're going to use. Think of cylinders when doing it. So we're going to start with 2 pi, and then we integrate from how we do it, from A to B. And then we need to understand the radius times the height. And it could be in terms of dx or dy. Now, one of the things that makes this different is that it's not going to be perpendicular. Instead, it's going to be parallel. So when it says find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region that you see shaded here, which is y equals x squared plus 1, x equals 0, y equals 0, the shaded area, and x equals 1, so that's what's bounded, and then we're going to revolve it around the y axis. Uh, this is going to be parallel. So when we revolve it around the y axis parallel, everything is going to be in terms of x. So when I look first, the height of it is going to be this curve. So how tall is it is going to be this curve, which is x squared plus 1. The radius is going to be this width. And so whatever the x value is from 0 to 1 is going to be the radius. So in this example, the radius is just going to be x. And the height is x squared plus 1. And then we're going to set it up. So we start with 2 pi. We're going to integrate from 0 to 1. And then the radius is the x coordinate. And the height is x squared plus 1. So there's your setup to begin with. Once we set it up now, we just have to integrate it to find it. So we are going to distribute. And then we are going to add 1 to the exponent and divide. We're going to add 1 to the exponent and divide. And we're going to integrate from, uh, this is, uh, sorry, this is 0 to 1. So then you plug in 1. When you plug in 0, the answer is 0, so I don't need to go subtract 0. And if I simplify it with common denominators, 2 over, that's 3 over 4. So that's going to be 6 over 4, or another way to write is 3 over 2. Something brand new. It's okay. So there's the first example, using cylinders, shell method. Now, why would you use the disk method for this? Why wouldn't, why would using the disk method be more complicated? And part of the reason is because we're going on the y-axis, first of all, you'd have to write in terms of y. So this is all in terms of x because it's parallel. And you would need more and you would need two integrals. So as you do this, you need one integral for this revolving around and one integral for this revolving around. So you need two integrals revolving around it rather than just one because it's parallel. OK. Number two, set up but don't integrate an integral, giving the volume of the solid form by revolving it around the, this curve, which you see here and y equals negative x, which you see here. So let's start first of all. What describes the radius here is just the x-coordinate. So whatever the x-coordinate is from 0 to, oh, and I need to find what that is. So we're going to make it equal to each other and solve that to find the bound. So anyways, uh, whatever that x value is here from 0 to that, that's the radius. The height is top subtract bottom. So that would be 2x minus x squared and then subtract the bottom, which is negative x. So we do need to find the bound. So I know it goes, it starts 2 pi. It's going to go 0. But then I need to find this point of intersection. So we need to make it equal to each other. So if I went 2x subtract x squared equals negative x, and then I solve it. So I want the power term to be positive. So I'm going to make it equal to 0. I'm going to add x squared. When I subtract 2x, I get negative 3x. And then if I solve this by factoring, the answer is 0 and 3. So this is 3. I don't guess it, right? I find that the bound is 3. And then the radius times the height, that's this information. And that's good. 
And he said, just to set it up. Number three, we're going to do both methods. So the method we use revolving with disks, which is a circle formula, compared to a cylinder formula. So uh, to find the volume formed here by revolving this region, which is y equals x cubed, x equals 2, and y equals 0. So the new method, the shell method, let's look at it first. So if I think of it as a shell method, I need to memorize this. It's 2 pi. It goes 0 to 2. And then I need to know the radius. So for this case, oh, it got blurry. The radius is just the x coordinate. Now you're going to say, is it always just the x? And the answer is no. We'll look at examples where it is not. So basically, when there's a space between what you're revolving around and the line of revolution, then we'd have to change it a bit. And I'll show you. But if there's no space, so if we revolve around the x axis, it's a solid going around then uh, it's just going to be the x-coordinate, or if it's the other way, it'd be the y-coordinate. All right. And then the height of it is just the curve, which is x cubed. Oh, what did I do wrong? Ha ha. So, because it's with the x, I made a mistake by uh, thinking it's parallel with the y. Silly, it's this way. So, because it's this way, so it's parallel with the x, that changes it. So we are going to use the y value. So here's an example where the y value is going to be the radius. So whatever the y value is, is going to be the radius. And then the height here is right, subtract, left. So the right is 2 and then subtract. Now I need to change what this looks like. So uh, x is equal to the cube root of y to get x by itself. And so when I go the height, it's going to be the right subtract the left. So let's, let's change that now better. Here, I'm going to scratch, scratch, scratch. So it's 2 pi from 0. Now the y values go 0 to 8. And you can plug in 2 to see 2 cubed is 8. So it goes 0 to 8 because now we're just using the y values. So the y is the radius. And then the height is 2 minus the cube root. So I'm going to write that as 1 third. And then there's the setup. So before I go any further, I'm going to distribute. That's an exponent 1. So when you multiply, you add the exponents. And then I'm going to integrate. So 2y becomes y squared. Uh, add 1, so 4 plus 3, that's 7 over 3, and then the reciprocal. And I'm integrating that from 0 to 8. So the next step is to plug in 8. Now, when I plug in 0, the answer is going to be 0, so I don't need to do that. And I'll simplify that for you. If you simplify that, you get 128 pi over 7. That's the shell method. If I use the disk method, that's with uh, circles. So this is perpendicular for the disk. So the disk method is pi r squared. This one we're integrating from 0 to 2 because we're using x's. And it's top subtract bottom, which is x cubed subtract 0, which is just x cubed. You can tell in this case it's not easier to do this. It's easier to do this. We're then going to integrate. So that's x to the fourth divided by 4 from 0 to 2. I plug in 2 first. So this is, when you combine this together, it's x to the 6th. So that when I integrate it, you add 1 and divide. That's where the 7 comes in. And now plug in. And if you plug in 2, you get 128 pi over 7. Plug in 0, you get 0. And notice the answer is the same for the shell method or the disk method. All right. 
Now, for revolutions other than around the x or y axes, and that's you, when there's creates a space between the region that you're doing and what you're revolving around, it's a little bit more complicated. We're still using this formula, but R and H must be both non-negative. Now, when setting up the radius, we're going to go right, subtract left, or top, subtract bottom when doing it. So, when I'm revolving this, so X subtract 1 means it's been shifted 1 to the right, and this is what it looks like. And this is the region between 0 and 5. So, this is the region that we're doing. Now, if I do it around the Y axis, right? It's parallel to the Y, so that means that I'm using the X values. So I'm going to go from 1 to 5, so start with 2 pi, 1 to 5, and the radius is just the Y value here, and the height of it is top subtract bottom, which is the square root of, uh, sorry, the radius is just the X coordinate, and then the the height of it is top subtract bottom, which is the square root of x minus 1. And there's the setup. If it's at negative 2, it starts the same way. But the radius must always be positive. So how we set this up, instead of using the x coordinate, we're going to take the x coordinate, this here, the region is on the right. So we're going to go x subtract negative 2. When I go x subtract negative 2, that's the radius. And then the height is the same. If it was along the line uh, x equals 5, that's there. The same start. But now, this region is to the left of our line of revolution, so we have to go right, subtract left for the radius. So on the right is 5, and then subtract left, which is just x. And that's it. All right, example number 5. Uh, find the volume of the solid form by revolving the region x equals y squared and x equals 4 about the line y equals negative 3. So x equals y squared looks like this. Uh, line x equals 4 and then we have a region here. And we're revolving it around negative 3. Now if I plug 4 in here, it's going to be helpful to know that the square root. Oh no, here. So we're going to be parallel. We're going to be parallel to our line of uh, revolution, which is right here at 3. So we're going to take this region, and it's parallel to it. So there's going to be y values here. So we start with 2 pi. And the y values to find it, we're going to plug 4 in here, make it equal to each other. And then when you square root it, you can see the answer is positive and negative 2. So this is negative 2. This is positive 2. y equals negative 3 is below it. To find the radius, we're going to take the y value and recognize it's above. So it's the y subtract negative 3. And then the height of it is this line, this uh, pink line here, which is right subtract left. So on the right is 4 subtract left, which is y, uh, y squared. We're going to multiply it through. So we're going to FOIL it. So that is uh, 4y and 12 
minus y cubed minus 3y squared. Making sure I foiled it correctly. And now, we're just going to do the power rule. So we're going to add 1 to the exponent and divide. 12 is just 12y. Add 1 to the exponent and divide. Add 1 to the exponent. And when you divide, the 3's divide out. Oops. And I'm integrating from negative 2 to 2. So then the last step, and I'm not going to simplify it, uh, the last step is to plug in the upper bound. Subtract the lower bound. Negative 2. So the lower bound subtract the, or the upper bound subtract the lower bound. And that would, if you cared, would simplify to 64 pi. Just doing it for you. But this is good right here. Example number six. Set up an integral which could be used to find the volume of the solid which would be formed if the region from example five were revolved around the line y equals three. So y equals three would be above here. Here's the line y equals 3. So if I took this and revolved it around that line, uh, the only thing that would change is the radius because now the line of revolution is above. So I would go 3 subtract y to find the radius. So everything else is the same. Start with 2 pi from negative 2 to 2. But now it's top subtract bottom for the radius. And then the height stays the same. So everything else would stay the same once you understand it. It's the radius that's challenging to find and to practice. And there it is. All right, last one. Again, this is new for calculus. This is a BC topic. Arc length. So arc is a part of a circle, right? So if I want to find arc length of anything here, so if there's a piece of curve and I want to know the length of it. So I want to know the length from 0 to 2. This arc length. I just want to know the length of it because it's not straight. It's not a line. How would you find the length of this if it's curved? That's a calculus question. Kind of cool, right? So to find the length of that, that's the formula. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 2. And it's the square root of 1 plus, And we take the derivative and square it. So the derivative here would be uh, 9x squared subtract 3 and then you square the derivative, and then we'd use your calculator. Where is it? Here it is. All right. So we're going to uh, integrate. So it's an integration question to know the arc length and derivative kind of put in together. So integrate. We're going to integrate from 0 to 2 to find the length of that curve. And it's square root 1 plus, And it's the derivative, which is 9x squared subtract 3. And we square it dx. That's it. So the length of that curve is 20.633. All right. I know we need to practice it. Mr. G Math over and out. Next, we'll do the assignment together and try to get stronger. Till next time.